I, sorry, I had messed up. In the last video, we had left off trying to find the midpoint of, or I'm sorry, the mid-segment endpoints. So what we need to do to find the mid-segment is first we want to calculate the midpoints. We want to find the midpoint of the two sides in which uh, the mid-segment should exist. So first off, I need to figure out which two lines are parallel. Well, this top line and this line right here are definitely not parallel. They have different slopes. If I continued them, I can see that they would cross each other. So they are not parallel. These two sides are parallel. So I know that my mid-segment needs to be parallel to the other two bases of my rectangle. Meaning, in order to find the mid-segment, I need to find the midpoint of these two and the midpoint of these two. Once I find those and connect them, I should have myself a mid-segment. We will use the midpoint formula where we add our two x values and then divide by two, and then add our two y values and divide by two. So let's do that for a and b first. My two x values are 0 and 18. So if I want to find my midpoint, I'm going to do 0 plus 18 divided by 2. That will find me the x-coordinate of my midpoint on top. Now in red, let's do the y values. My y value of a is 8, and the y value of b also happens to be 8. So I'm going to do 8 plus 8 divided by 2. When I crunch these numbers, 0 plus 18 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. For my y values, 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So 9 comma 8, 9 comma 8, that point right there is where my mid-segment will start on the top. However, we are not done. There is also an endpoint on the bottom of the trapezoid. We are going to find it the same way, but we're just going to use two different points. The two different points are the ones on the bottom now. Once again, I'm going to add my x values, 1 plus 20, and then divide that by 2 to find the x coordinate. And if I add my y coordinates, which are 4 and 0, 4 plus 0 over 2, oops, I wrote 40. I will find the y coordinate. 20 plus 1 is 21. 21 divided by 2, I get 10 and a half or 10.5. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 10 and a half. So 10 and a half would be something like right here, comma 2 is this point right here. And when I connect them, I can see that these three lines, my line isn't perfect, but these three lines should all be parallel, going the same direction. And I have now found the mid-segment using coordinates. All right. Finally, let me work a problem using a kite. Again, the diagonals are perpendicular. The two consecutive sides are congruent. And the angles connecting your two unique sides your two non-congruent sides, so angle B and D in this case. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Angle P and R in this particular picture are going to be congruent as well. So P and R are congruent, these two are congruent, these two are congruent, and my diagonals are not congruent but they are perpendicular, meaning they create 90 degree angles. So again, the four angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. My job is to find angle N. The first property that I talked about is that the angles that are in between your two non-congruent sides, I can see the one and two tick marks. So this angle, N, is going to be same, the same as this angle, L. I don't know what they are, 
but I know that they're the same. Also, again, like I said before, and we use the polygon interior angle sum theorem to figure out that the inside of a quadrilateral always adds up to 360 degrees. So we will use that. Angle K looks like it's 71, plus angle L, which we don't know, plus angle M, which is 52, plus angle N is once again X, we don't know it. If I add all four of these together, it should give me 360. I'm gonna go through and solve, combine like terms, Subtract 123 from both sides. Skirt. I get 237. And then finally divide both sides by two to get rid of the two. And I get that X is equal to 118.5. So I have found this angle right here, which is angle N. That is what they want me to do. I'm done with this problem. So again, quadrilaterals on the inside add up to 360. Use the relationship you know to set up the information you don't know and solve for it. Again, if ever I'm moving too quickly, you can always pause the video or rewind it to figure out what I did or to look back at what I did. So this is another practice problem that you could do to try it. This one wants you to find angle A. All right, here we have this. They want us to find AD. Well, let me mark AD. I know I've got a cutting. AD is right here. Now, this is a side. We cannot use what we know about angles to solve this one. What I can use, however, is the fact that this is part of a right triangle. Since the diagonals cross at a 90 degree angle, they are perpendicular, this angle is a right angle. So I'm gonna kind of turn this picture on its side and I'll relabel all the letters and stuff. So A is right here, E is right here, and D from the bottom is here. Here is our right triangle. It looks like AE, AE is 12. ED, ED is 24. And my job is to find AD. I don't know that one, so that one was X. All right, so maybe some of you recognize, maybe you don't, but anytime we have a right triangle and we know two of the sides, we can find the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. And what that is, is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's always important to figure out what C is first. If we ever set it flat like this, where one of the bottom sides is flat and the other leg is also going straight up and down, the diagonal always has to be your C value. The other way you can tell is find your 90 degree marker. Your 90 degree marker will always be pointing like an arrow at the side that should be C. Anywho, now that we know what C has to be, we can set up our Pythagorean theorem. It doesn't matter which one of these two are A and which one of them is B, as long as you plug them in. We get 24 squared, plus 12 squared equals X squared. Okay, 24 squared, you can type into your calculator. I believe it is 576. 12 squared is 144 equals X squared. Next, I need to add these two together. 720, I believe. All right. I add these two together. Let me give some room at the bottom. Oh, I'm going to run into that logo. So I'll just do it off on the side on the left. Continuing over here. 576 plus 144 is 720. And then finally, to find my answer, 
I need to take the square root of both sides in order to get rid of the square. The square root and square cancel each other out. And I get that x is equal to, oh, hold on real quick. Let's find out what the square root of 720 is. I want the square root of 720. I'm going to hit 720 and then hit the square root button. There we are. So it looks like it's about 26.83. Did I round that right? Twenty-six point eight three two. So yes, it says twenty-six point eight three. Okay. So, a lot of times you're going to have to leverage the fact that you have right angles to solve for missing sides of a kite. In the DOL, particularly, I believe they ask you to find the uh, perimeter, meaning you're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem once for this triangle, and then once for one of these smaller triangles to find one of these two sides. So speaking of, here is an example of calculating perimeter. We figured out in the last problem that these bottom two sides, since they are congruent, are 26.83. Now what we have to do is figure out what these two sides are so that we can add them all together and calculate the perimeter. So once again, I know that this top angle is a right angle, so I've got myself another right triangle so I can use Pythagorean theorem a second time. The bottom will be 12, the vertical piece will be 6, and my diagonal piece will once again be x. So I plug in my Pythagorean theorem, 6 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared, 6 squared is 36, 12 squared is 144. I add these two together and I believe I get 180. Once again, in order to get rid of the squared, I must take the square root of both pieces and I come to the answer that x is equal to, let's check out the square root of 180 on our calculator, everything 180 i'm going to hit the square root button i get that it is 13.416 meaning this one rounds up to a two so i'm going to call this 13.42 since i found one side again special thing about kites is that the two um adjacent sides are congruent now that i found all four of these I simply need to add them all up to get my total answer. So let's do that. I'll do my rounded answers, even though I technically shouldn't. 13.42 plus 13.42 plus 28.63 plus 28. 60. Ooh. It's 26.83. Oopsie. So let me undo that by subtracting 28.63. All right, so I have 13.42 plus 13.42 gives me 26.84. Now I need to add my 26.83 plus 26.83. And I get approximately 80.5. So the perimeter, if I add all four of these sides, is approximately 80.5, whatever units they were using. So here's a problem that you can try like that. 
Um, yes. You're going to get your answer where your root is extracted. If you remember how to do that, awesome. If you don't, again, find your answer like we just did. However, you're going to go through and do 16 times the square root of 2. And that should give you a decimal and see if that answer matches the answer that you get. That is, again, if you don't remember how to extract roots. If you do remember how to extract roots, awesome. Or if you don't remember and you would like to know, there are lots of videos on YouTube or Khan Academy that can explain how to extract roots to simplify your answer. Okay, that does it for the examples.